So we're going to be talking about evolution, origins of species, types of speciation, and adaptation radiation. So evolution. Evolution is changes in population over long periods of time or change within a gene pool of a popula population. Fossils. Fossils are a way to prove that evolution has occurred. So fossils is any preserved evidence of an organism and it supports a theory of evolution. Examples are trace fossils, molds and casts, placement, petrified or premineralized. So here's some pictures. Here's some petrified wood down here in the corner. You can see um, foot imprints here. So these would be imprints of an animal, of tracks. And then fossil record evidence. Fossils provide a record of species that lived long ago, show that ancient species have similarities with species that are alive today. So you can look at fossils and then look at living creatures today and you can observe how they're the same and how they're different. And you can see how past organisms have evolved. Gradualism. The evolution of a new species by gradual accumulation of small genetic changes over long periods of time occurs at a slow but constant rate. Over a short period of time, it is hard to notice. So here's an example. We have a horse here, and this is Ancestor. And it took a very long time for it slowly to evolve into what you see today. So it was very gradual over a long period of time. Punctuated equilibrium is the opposite of gradualism. It is a rare rapid event of branching speciation. It's characterized by long periods of virtual no change, so it's the same, it's equal, and then you have a rapid development into new forms. So here's an example. For a very long time, the ancestor of elephants didn't change, and then all of a sudden, around, let's say that's like 10 million years ago, it diverged, and you have all these other branches off this common ancestor. Nothing was occurring, and then a lot of things occurred at once. A lot of changes occurred at once. So it's punctuated equilibrium. Yes. Gradualism or punctuated equilibrium. So let's look at some examples so you can tell the difference between the two. So here is an example of gradualism with butterflies. You have one common ancestor, and it occurs slowly over time to see the changes occurring. And then for punctuated, you have one butterfly, and it's just that same butterfly for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden you get two different butterflies at the same time. Gradualism slowed cur um, slowly and punctuated. Nothing occurred, and then all of a sudden two things occurred at once. Two different butterflies came at once. So let's make some observations. I would like you to take a moment and list three similarities between this human arm, this horse leg, this cat leg, this porpoise fin, and this bat wing, and then list three differences between them as well. So comparative anatomy. Homologous structures have similar structures that are inherited from a common ancestor. So each limb is adapted for different uses, but all have similar bones. So if you look at this, you can see they all have a similar wrist bone right here, where they have something that looks similar to fingers. And right here. And they have three major parts of the bone. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can see that there's similarities between all of these appendages, even though they're from different species. 
monogamous structures are structures used for the same purpose and can be similar to similar in construction, but they're not inherited from a common ancestor. So right here we have a fly that has wings and a bird that has wings, but a fly is an insect and a bird, this eagle, is a bird. They do not share a common ancestor. They both evolved separately, but they have similar wing structure. So that familiar or er, similar features can evolve independently in similar environments. Wings of birds versus wings of insects. And then comparative anatomy. Vestigial structures are reduced in size and are often not used. An example is wings on a kiwi. So here's a kiwi and they have wings, but they can't actually fly. And another example of this would be for humans, we have wisdom teeth, but we don't actually have a purpose for these wisdom teeth, and most people actually have to get them pulled out because we evolved to the point where we no longer need our wisdom teeth. So there's structures that are left over from before, and now we no longer use them. Or this kiwi no longer uses their wings for flying. So Darwin's book and observations. The origins of species. So what are species? Species consists of interbreeding populations of organisms that can produce healthy, fertile offspring. Speciation. Speciation is the evolution of one or more species from a single ancestral species. Allopatric speciation. Geographic speciation is speciation that occurs when a species becomes isolated due to geographic structures such as mountains and rivers. So we have four different species of chipmunk living in the Grand Canyon and they all evolved differently because they were isolated. And so they all have uh, different adaptations that help them for the specific areas in which they live. Speciation. Sympatric speciation refers to the formation of two or more descendant species from a single and ancestral species all occur, are occupying the same geographic location. So in this example, we have fish in a pond, and they're all in the same area, in the same geographic location. And so for somatic uh, speciation, they're going to actually become two different species within that same geographic location. So we have some blue fish and some orange fish. Now they're two different species and it occurred in the same location, same geographic location, as opposed to allopatric speciation, where the pond actually got divided right here by this strip of land, and now you have two different species from a common ancestor, but it's due to a geographic separation. And now you have blue fish in this pond and orange fish in this pond. So it's divergent evolution, when isolated populations of a species evolve independently. So you would have a common ancestor right here, and then it would diverge, and you'd get a woolly mammoth and a modern elephant. They both came from a common ancestor. Then you have convergent evolution, when different species with different ancestors develop similar or analogous adaptations in response to similar environments. So an example of that would be a shark, which is a fish and a dolphin, which is a mammal. So they both look similar, and they both live in similar environments, but they're two different species. So they both have fins, but one is cold-blooded and one is warm-blooded. But they develop these adaptations because they live in a similar habitat. So they both evolved similarly at the they both evolved at the same time with similar features, but they don't have a common ancestor. A fish and mammals can't have the same ancestor. Speciation is evolution. So coevolution is when species so coevolution are species that adapt to one another. They depend on each other for survival. So right here we have a yucca plant and a moth that pollinates only yucca plants. And without this moth, these yucca plants wouldn't be able to pollinate. So what 
evolution is, is species that uh, need each other in order to survive. So they evolve together. So the yucca plant evolved with the moth. Otherwise, the yucca plant wouldn't be pollinated by that moth. Speciation is evolution. Adaptive radiation is the evolution of many diversely adapted species from one common ancestor. So you have a common ancestor, and then you have that species break off into many di different species, but they all have the same common ancestor. So here's an example of finches. All these finches have a common ancestor, but they all evolved slightly different due to where they lived, what type of food they ate, like the environment they lived in. So some of them have a little wider beak. This is one of the species that Darwin studied. He looked at the finch's beaks. And as you can see right here, this finch's beak is much wider than this finch's beak. And it's due to that they eat different types of food. This one might need a long, narrow um, beak to be able to get worms or something and stick its nose down into this cactus to get maybe a worm. And this large brown finch would need a big beak to crack seeds. So they all have a common ancestor, but they all developed differently so that they could survive in their habitats.